Hello everybody, FS Dream Team is happy to announce the biggest update of the year for GSX Pro. We call it BBFU, Big Black Friday Update. It started about three months ago, when, following users' suggestions on various social media, it was found one of the most requested feature was the cleaning crew. We thought it would have been a fairly easy thing to add, but we realized we needed to improve the custom animation system to give characters a more realistic behavior than what we used to see in passengers since the cleaning crew has to operate together in a very limited space like an airplane corridor. The cleaning crew service is called from the additional services menu and it's only available when there are no passengers on board, so either before boarding or after deboarding. The crew will arrive in a small minivan and will take the airplane stairs, or if the gate has a jetway, they will use the rear stairs, so we can finally use it for something, using the jetway if the rear stairs has been disabled. The number of people in the cleaning crew depends on the number of corridors. Four people per corridor, so we'll see eight persons with wide bodies and four on single aisle planes. Each character has its own individual animations, and they use various equipment to perform their job. Compared to regular passengers, these new characters have some awareness of each other, so they make space in order to minimize collision in such a restricted space. Because of the variance of random timings, speeds, and corridor lengths, each cleaning service is different, and it's fun to see this coordinated dance. After passing through the whole corridor, each member of the cleaning crew will exit to go back to their minivan, ready for the next service. I know what you're thinking. Is that really all there is to this big update? Is this everything FS Dream Team has been working on for the past three months? No, there's one more thing. How many times you thought, I don't like selecting my gate on a big airport with 300 gates not grouped logically? Or maybe, I don't know where's my gate, or if it's good for my airplane, and what if it's taken? Or can you add a back option to the menu? We added something more to the menu, a whole new application, which we call the Versatile Map. It's versatile because it can be used in many places in GSX, improving its usability quite a bit. Here we used it from the reposition option, so we can check all gates, taxiways, and runways of the airport. We can see at a first glance how many parking spots are suitable for our airplane, which are all those highlighted with a yellow border. Since this is LAX, big international airport, there are quite a few of them, but still, we can see some with no highlight, indicating those are too small for your aircraft, as GSX used to say. We can zoom the map around our position with the Zoom to User button or by pressing the Z key on the keyboard. You can also zoom in or out with the mouse wheel and pan the view by dragging with the middle mouse button. Then we have the Zoom Fit button, or the key F, which changes its meaning depending on the context. Since in this example, we have a SimBrief flight plan from Los Angeles to Las Vegas loaded, the map is showing the route and Zoom Fit will show the entire plan. Now, the map as it is now, it's useful, but it's not that much interesting to see. So let's add a background map layer. This is OpenStreetMaps, which is a free community service you'll surely might know. And it's the default choice if you don't have any other options requiring a subscription. Then we have Google Maps and Bing Maps, and they require to provide your own API keys, which can be obtained from Google or Microsoft. Satellite maps are most useful for scenery developers, especially when creating a GSX profile. So they might already have access to API keys, but they might not be that useful for actual flight. If you have a Navigraph chart subscription, GSX can now connect to your Navigraph account and integrate charts to make GSX all the more usable. You can choose between IFR high altitude IFR low altitude, VFR, and world map, both in day or night variations. But remember, we arrived here using the reposition menu, so this map can be used as a replacement searching for a gate to move to instead of the menu that might have many pages of parking positions possibly not well organized and without any help to know where they are. In fact, down below, we can see the familiar Warp Here button, which will instantly move the airplane on the gate you just selected on map. And what we have here, another thing that makes this map different than a standard moving map. Its integration with GSX can show some custom operator we set up in this airport profile.
The map has other useful options when we open it from the additional services menu, which shows two entries, one for the airport we are currently located, another one for the destination airport planned on Simbrief. If we open the departure airport, we can see a list of all airports charts related to the departure, and the departure chosen on Simbrief would be highlighted to be easier to find quickly. The airport chart will be overlaid on top of any background layer, and the view will automatically fit the entire chart. We can also set the opacity value to add more background context to it. When we load the airport taxi info chart, it's very interesting to see how the data from the airport, which includes also elements from a GSX airport profile, matches, or not, the actual charts. We think presenting the data like this should be very useful to anybody trying his hands at profiles creation. We can do the same for the planned destination airport, and now we'll see all charts relevant to the arrival, like approaches and arrivals. Same as before, we can see the arrival procedure planned on Simbrief, highlighted in the charts list. Now let's talk about airport customization. How many times you wanted the standard GSX 3D editor keys to be easier to remember? With the new map, we can now choose to customize the vehicle's positions in 2D using various background maps and with mouse-based, easy-to-use controls. Just click and drag to move objects, and drag their front arrow to rotate them, with a compass helper to better see alignment with other things. Expert profile creators will find useful to use a satellite map, like Bing or Google, to get a better idea how vehicles are arranged in real life. You can also change the parking radius by dragging on the parking border, which will size in real time, making it very easy to set the proper dimension. The threshold distance, which is the radius GSX uses to decide if you are inside a parking spot, can be adjusted in the same way. Here, you can adjust the parking system position and rotation with a larger rotation helper to better find a good alignment with the parking itself. When you are done, press the Save button, and your edits will be saved in the airport profile. Finally, it wouldn't be a GSX major update if we didn't improve its most important feature, pushback. Have you ever wondered how it might be if you could use a better method to edit a pushback custom route? With the new Customize 2D button, we can use the map to create custom pushback routes easily. Since this gate is a bit close to the end of the terminal, with not much space for the tug to move, we'll create a push-pull procedure to show how much faster the new map mode can help to create a fairly tricky route. First, click with the left button where you want the airplane to stop. You can set position and heading now. Then left-click again to create a waypoint, then right-click to finalize the route for further editing. To create the right push-pull route, rotate the waypoint until you'll see a smooth transition between the green section indicating push and the red section indicating pull. The arrows would make it even clearer which is which. By zooming in further, you can be extremely precise, aligning the route to the airport data. Press Save and your custom route will be saved in the selected slot of the airport profile. Now let's give a proper name to our route, first by clicking the Label button, which will automatically read the name of the taxiway and your final orientation, and edit it to add a push-pull indication, which is always useful to see in use. But where the new map is most useful is when performing the actual pushback, improving the existing Quick Edit pushback with a new option called Quick Edit on Map. The normal pushback works as usual, but after the headset operator asks for the pushback direction, we can now choose between the traditional 3D Quick Edit or the new Quick Edit on Map. We found it's usually easier to set the map orientation to heading up since it's more intuitive when editing a pushback route. Since we are performing a live pushback now, we need to be sure the apron is clear. And to do this, we can use another feature of the map, the traffic layer, which is normally disabled, but can be turned on to show all AI airplanes on the airport. The ones not currently active have a dark color, and the active ones, which might be an obstacle to our pushback, have a brighter color. 
This way, we can be sure it's safe to push and plan our route accordingly. Now we checked the apron is clear, we can plan the route as before. As we are still at LAX with not much space in this terminal, we'll do another short push-pull. Left click to set the final airplane position and adjust the heading as required. Right click to confirm the route, remove any waypoints GSX created automatically that might not be required in this case, and adjust the heading of the single waypoint we'll use to obtain a simple push-pull route. This looks good, now click save and we'll return to the point where we were in the actual pushback service. Now we got back to the parking brakes release message, just like with the standard pushback. The route you just created this way has been saved in the quick edit slot for this parking position. And if you'll ever use this parking again in the future, this route is already there and you'll just choose use saved quick edit. The pushback crew is executing our custom route as requested. This is the first push section. Now we are at the waypoint we set before, where the tow tug reverses the direction and start the pull section. Here the tug is pulling, and at the end of the pushback, we are exactly in the position we set before. Now the headset operator has concluded the procedure and she's waving us goodbye, so we are free to taxi now. But we want to check, where is the runway we are supposed to take off from? And the map can help us here as well, with the new option, Select on Map. This option is always available in all situations where you are not parked and open the GSX menu. So it's the same whether we are taxiing before taking off or we just landed. We can see that runway start positions are displayed in gray. So we go to 24 left, select it, and the familiar GSX selection menu will show with options like show me this spot or just warp me there. Let's check where the runway is first. Okay, it's just 363 meters in front of us. It won't be a long taxi, but we are lazy, so we'll warp. Open the map again, select the runway start, select the Just Warp Me There option, and boom, we are there, ready to take off. Now we are in flight, so let's see what the new map can do for us. Yes, there's a moving map option now, which is a different mode that activates when in flight, and works as expected with the Follow User option enabled automatically. We can load different maps, like our planned departure, and see how our airplane is following it on autopilot. We can change the map orientation as well to track the airplane while it's moving and changing course. The map can be freely explored, and panning the map by dragging the middle mouse button will automatically disengage the follow user mode so we can look around freely. But we are not restricted to just look around. Airports are clickable, and if you want to check any other airport on the map, maybe because you need to plan an emergency landing, you can do so by clicking on an airport, which will load its data from the sim, with the option to use your Navigraph charts as well. Now let's have a look at our destination, Las Vegas, and see where we might want to park there. Click on it, and the airport data will be loaded with all charts at your disposal. Terminal 3 looks good, with plenty of gates suitable to our A320, so we'll choose one. This will select the gate in GSX, so by the time we'll land, after the landing roll ends, the parking will be prepared with all vehicles waiting for us. We can also use the map to change the gate, in case ATC would assign us a different one. Select Change Facility, and choose Select from Map. The map will open, showing the gate we previously selected, so we can change it as required. After landing, when opening the GSX menu while taxiing, you'll still have the option to view, change, or reselect your gate from the map, eliminating the need to scroll through pages of menu options to find the right location. We believe this will significantly enhance the user experience in GSX, and we're excited to finally release this major update. Navigate with the brand new map. Get the cleaning crew in just a snap. GSX Pro is the place to be. Grab the update.